Um, okay, so I'm wondering if she booked us because we did choose the same stand or if that was a coincidence. I, but... I, I have a feeling, well, did she sent it out after we sent her last week? Yeah, I think so. I, I bet it was more of a coincidence than, yeah. but still yeah. funny that we chose the same standard. I know, for all, it could have been any grade level. Yeah, exactly. I know, I saw that, and I was like, oh, look at that. I know. But it was nice to see, like, another lesson, you know, how yeah. you did it. Um, I really liked how you started your lesson, like, from the bare bones of that standard, just really explaining the five W's and, like, starting off from there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, I think I've just, have you been in a classroom before? Like, yeah, uh-huh. I, this year I actually taught middle school math. Oh, no way. Yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah. yeah, definitely crazy. So, um, but I've mostly worked with little kids. Um, yeah. But this year was just different. So I've actually spent a lot of time in the classroom. I'm just yeah. not used to doing it this way. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have my, I, my only child is only two months old. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have kids at home or even, uh, kids around, you know, and like you had said, it's kind of an awkward time to borrow kids. Yeah. Um, exactly. so I did the lesson as you saw, like for my brother and my partner, and it was just, <laughs> e even to get started took a million times because we just couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. That's just <laughs> how like, weird it was and then my brother was like trying to be a second grader yeah. <laughs> and that making me laugh even more like I was just trying to keep it together and I feel like it just I don't know you know I don't know it just wasn't yeah but. yeah I think um I was I would have been more I would have been looking forward to doing this assignment if we we're in a regular class yeah. because I've been a substitute so I've certainly done many lessons but mm -hmm. For me, coming um, with all the information that the learning map provides us mm -hmm. with and to really be able to implement, you know, watching the video and then having a discussion. So mm -hmm. I kind of feel like we got cheated a little bit because we're not able to have those discussions, which is what really, because you never know the direction the kids are going to take it mm -hmm. or you never know if they're going to answer your question the way you expect them to or if it's going to take a completely different turn that leads to a whole nother part of the lesson. So exactly. And that's, you know, my lesson, um, which now like going back through my learning map, I want to go back and add it in, um, mm -hmm. was kind of a, a further lesson. So like as, as if they've already been taught the five W's and now we're kind of going right. to learning it, but a lesson like the one I did starting out with a chapter book and kind of going through and stopping and asking these questions and recognizing the key details and who, what, when, where, why, how. Yeah. Um, I didn't, you know, th that's where I really felt I lacked was not getting the actual response from kids, you know, are they really, how, you know, in this uh, lesson, how was I really to understand if they were understanding who the characters were, the setting, why things were happening, how they were happening, et cetera. So that I think in this lesson, I struggled with because I don't feel like I got authentic feedback because I didn't have the class yeah. setting. Um, or you would have been able to have more discussion mm -hmm. about a very simple question. Mm -hmm. What is going on? You know, <laughs> and the boys tried their best. I mean, it, yeah, it was funny, but it just wasn't, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I had my four-year-old and my 37-year-old husband. Yeah, I, I, liked, I liked when you did your partner time with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, at first I was, I was going to borrow kids, and then I'm like, you know what? I don't even, I don't know if they want them coming to my house, too, and I don't know. So I think yeah. it worked out fine. Yeah, I think we, we did the best we could under the yeah. circumstances. <laughs> totally. So when it asked, um, I was trying to think like if I would have given my learning map to a colleague or someone that's already a teacher, like what I was trying to think like, what would they suggest for me? And I don't know. I feel like my learning map, I feel like I, I covered things pretty well. Mm -hmm. I just, I think it depending on the, 
this how severe the different levels of lear- literacy mm-hmm. are for my students. I think that's why I would have the most trouble. Yeah. And that's pretty much a struggle you're going to have in every part of every lesson, I think. Right. So I think getting that, that's kind of tips that will come with time. Mm-hmm. But I was, I was thinking that would probably be one thing my a fellow teacher would have said, well, what would you do if you have students that literally can't read, mm-hmm. even though it was a pretty simple book, you know? Right. right. Um, I, your learning map was great reading. It was extremely detailed. Um, I, what I took away from your map, which I would like to do better in mine, is you really wrote out your agenda down to the minutes, yeah. very detailed, and I really appreciated that. Um, um, you did a really good job even explaining your different students. Um, and again, I agree with you, just over time, how can you meet the needs of different students? So, um, you know, in both of our lessons, when you turn to a partner and you talk, well, what if you have a student that doesn't talk or doesn't engage, how are you going to help yeah. them in those moments? Um, right. If you have a student that doesn't speak English, you have an ELL student, um, how yeah. is the best way to go about these types of lessons where we're reading as a class or we're reading as partners and we're answering these questions? How can we yeah. help them in there provide the resources for them? Um, yeah, and I i mean, I think if we were in the regular setting, you probably would have went around to students that you know maybe struggle mm-hmm. getting their point across or maybe you're on the shy side mm-hmm. or maybe, you know, have English language uh, trouble a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's something that you would have went around to those students, right? Yep. Yeah. And then having, you know, the resources available for having, you know, obviously at home, I didn't have tablets or computers like I normally do at work to say, this is how you can read the story after we can listen to the story, um, offering those different media outlets for those students. Um, So again, I think we're both on the same page of going back to it just, we needed the classroom for this. Yeah to be able to use like the the projector and you know like I think it's always a good idea when you're discussing especially for the young students is to write down like what their responses are like okay so who are the main characters Mm -hmm. and to be able to write those down and stuff and it's hard in your living room but (laughs) it's it's not that easy but um even even doing this I, I will say that I still took away of like oh having the experience of practicing at home oh in my mind I'm going that would have been a really good idea or if I ever do do this um incorporating this or that would be really awesome or you know but what's good about that is those thoughts will really help because you'll have material for your reflection you know (laughs) exactly yeah so I can and that's pretty much what I think my reflection is going to be as well what I would have done if I were in a situation like this or had a student responded like this or not responded. Um, Yeah. And I just, you know, lightly watched her uh, Blackboard Mm -hmm. recording and she had talked about, you know, how you would help students if they did partner work, but you got two partners that didn't talk. How could you do that? Stuff like that. And, um, so it's really now we're just assuming like how could we help that so thinking of those situations in the classroom right yeah Yeah, and I also think like the kind of the bulk of my learning map came down to when the students are working one-on-one and they were you know I had a worksheet for them that they were had to fill out as an X ticket yeah and that's also really hard too because I didn't have partners. I didn't have kids here that are working in partners. And my whole role as a teacher at that, during that time frame, would to be walk around, you know, kind of assess if they are getting the understanding, mm-hmm. you know, maybe pausing, having to go back, go through the video, having another discussion if they're having trouble answering the who, what, where, when, and why, and whatnot. Exactly. So that was another thing, too, is the beginning part of my lesson, I, was kind of just doing a review because I think most of the second graders would have a general idea about the five W's, you know, right. right. But yeah. Um, so I would probably just, just say like to make your learning map as detailed as possible mm-hmm. that way 
because we will, I don't think we'll always get through everything, no. every part necessarily. I mean, sometimes things take so much longer. Most of the time, I think they take so much longer, especially for like ELA lesson mm-hmm. plans. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, just just being as detailed as you can. And then that way, especially when we go back and we review what we did and what worked and not the more information you have written down, the more you can kind of adjust things. Right, exactly. When I even noticed with my learning map that I like did something like, so part of my lesson plan was them writing predictions about what was going to happen in the first chapter or their questions, but I didn't add that into my learning map. So it was like an afterthought. So going back to that, I think in adding things, if you think of it along the way, then you have it for the future as well. Exactly. Yeah. I think a lot of times, I mean, even when, even when I was doing, I was kind of practicing in my head before we recorded the lesson and I was taking down notes and five minutes before I started, I was thinking how that would, the kids would benefit from going like the vocabulary part. Um, I kind of added that in at the very end when I was almost done writing my learning map the first time. And I was like, oh, shoot, I got to realize that some of these kids may not know some of these bigger words. Yeah. And then the end of the book had a bunch of definitions. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of just like the back of the book. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, I definitely can say we took away from the learning map still, you know, with or without the classroom experience. Yeah. My just my whole thing about the learning map is it is so time consuming for me at least so I just I'm really concerned that I think it's a great design Mm -hmm. but how realistic is it because it's not like we teach one lesson a day anyways right Right. you know and that's why so I think what was it maybe our class before this one we Mm -hmm. or maybe two classes but I can't remember starting learning maps Mm-hmm. Mine ended up being so long because I just felt like I spent so much time and felt like I had to fill in all this information. And yeah. then, um, with this professor, I think for BBC last week or the week before, she was like, don't, you know, each one only needs a few bullet points. And I'm thinking like, gosh, mm-hmm. mine have been so long and bulky in the past, but nobody's ever said yeah. anything. And now you're like, it doesn't need to be, it needs to be lighter. And then I'm looking at <laughs> schools examples and I'm like oh like so I it, like finding that balance of of yeah. adding a lot but maybe like giving ourselves a break and saying maybe it doesn't need to be as detailed as long as we're hitting the outline of it and really putting the bulk into our lesson in person yeah and I think it also depends on the example that mm-hmm. the professor gives us because totally. uh, I had a, a couple classes ago and that teacher really stressed me out because he was a talker. And so if he's giving my chance, Oh, he was like a Russian guy or something. I think I had him. I think I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. He was, he was tough and he was giving so much information that I felt, well, if he's telling us all this and we have to put all this back into the work, you know, and um, the example that, this professor gave us was I mean I pretty much follow that exactly like one paragraph for each focus student and I mean really you can you can write a book about focus students sometimes but I don't think that's that's not the whole point the gist of it should we should just be able to understand we need to keep them in mind Mm -hmm. and we need to have a little bit of background that would help for this particular lesson, you know? Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with you. Yeah, so um, let's see. Do you have any anything you anything else you want to talk about or any other tips for me or anything? No, I thought I act I very much so enjoyed your lesson and your learning plan. Um I when I watched your video I felt like I was in your classroom, like even the way you had the camera angled. Um, <laughs> and again I loved how detailed detailed yours was so I think given the circumstances it everything was great okay thank you so much yeah anything from your end that tips anything yeah hi (laughs) Levi yeah no I think um I I figured you had been in the classroom before because you look comfortable and 
you knew how to ask engaging questions. And I really liked how you um, had them browse the story before, get them, give them some time for them to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I really like how you had them write down a prediction because I, I think it's always great to go back mm -hmm. and think how things were different. And they sometimes they get excited, like, I guess that, you know. Or ask so those questions. Yeah, and you asked a lot of open-ended um, questions at, to spark discussion. I think a lot of times we make the mistake of asking questions that could be answered with a yes or no, and you'll get that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think you did a really good job, and you asked some really good questions. And I could tell that the boys were a little awkward, so I think you know. It was really funny because they thought that I was actually going to, like, turn in their papers to the person. Oh, really? <laughs> They went as far as writing with their non-dominant hand to look no. at my old handwriting and actually wrote things down. Oh my gosh, that's so, hilarious. At the end of the day, it ended up being a really funny experience for us. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you could tell in the beginning, there's a few times where we like had to keep it together, but it took like maybe 10 times to start that video because we would just all start laughing really hard. Well, that explains why they were kind of stoic in the beginning because they were like, okay, we got to get this together. Yeah. I was like, we're running out of time, guys. We got to pull it together. <laughs> yeah. When I did the first read aloud, um, so my son is four okay. and he's actually, he's really, he's really bright and he knows how to read. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, he did amazing. Yeah, but he's wild, you know, <laughs> and at the, towards the end of the when we were doing the read aloud, he wrote, raised his hand and I said, yes, Levi. And he said, mama, I fought it. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. So, so good. it's been entertaining and he's definitely that kid that will ask you something you are not prepared for. Mm -hmm. So he's giving me some, some good lessons. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wish you the best of luck for your baby girl and we're hoping we've been in there for 10 weeks and uh hoping that she's discharged in two days so no way yeah, like so yeah. oh good I hope so thank you and good luck with the rest of of school okay thank you and I will do you want me to email you our meeting video yes okay I, I will go welcome. ahead and it takes a while to save after but once it's saved I'll go ahead and just email it to you okay Okay. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Thank Bye, you. Bye.